is a pretty girl. Huh. Ain't that just the prettiest little puppy you ever seen? Oh, we call this little girl Daisy. She's her little Daisy girl. And Jasmine here, she's got... We haven't decided what we're going to call him. I like to call him Dude. But everybody else wants to call him Donald. It's Daisy's brother. And now that we got the cuteness overload out of the way, um, I just wanted to come on here and kind of give you an opportunity to get to know us a little bit. Um, I'm Greg. Uh, I missed a button. So I'm Greg. I'm I'm basically the landscape painter for G&J Chapel Artworks. And this over here is Jasmine. And she just does a little bit of everything. She's got a more open style of painting. Um, me personally, I... I started out my journey in art uh, pretty rudimentary, as, as anyone would, uh, doing what um, kind of resembled a maze, but really it was just a series of parallel lines all twisted together, and occasionally I'd put saying, you know, put sayings with, within the picture and that kind of thing. And then uh, when I got into high school, I got into advertising design, and. Uh, Learned how to do the kind of stuff like the graphics you're seeing on the screen and that, and stuff like that. And uh, picked up on airbrushing. And got pretty proficient airbrushing in the, in the landscape style. Um, we were using tempera paints. Uh, it, was, it was a water-based paint. And I, I got pretty proficient with that. Uh, I experimented with using my airbrush for... Uh, painting custom model cars which is another hobby of mine and uh, that didn't quite work out so well so I just got back into the airbrushing side of being an artist um, so you may you may see some airbrush work coming your coming your way through 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 me once in a while uh, but it's kind of something that needs a lot more practice for me to feel comfortable with sharing my process on on camera but uh, from there, I started watching uh, some old Bob Ross episode reruns of uh, Joy of Painting, and remembering watching Bob Ross as a kid, I kind of just said to heck with it, and I picked up a brush and some uh, crafters acrylics we had laying around the house, and that's kind of how I developed my current landscape painting style. Um, I do paint in the wet-on-wet -wet style that Bob Ross used, but obviously I've had to modify it for... Uh, using acrylics because he used oils and acrylics dry quite a bit faster so it's the same technique but a lot of different methods and, and um, we've got some projects coming your way but before I get into that I just want to give Jasmine an opportunity to kind of explain her art journey and what inspires her to create the art she creates and the, the general type of art that she creates I, I don't really know. I just guess taking it from drawing and just letting the pencil go wherever to just using crayons and then a paintbrush. But, uh, I mean, do you have any particular type of thing you like to paint? Like, I, I like to do landscape paintings. And I know for me, I already know that you're a just general put put the paintbrush to the paper and or canvas and uh, paint whatever comes to your mind but I also know that you get, you kind of have a plan more often than I do where it, you know where I tend to just start painting and whatever's coming out of the paintbrush and whatever showing up on the canvas I just work with it you see you seem to have more of a plan in your paintings so what what inspires you to do a specific painting and, and you know how often do you just have do you have to adjust because your plan's not working but you don't want to scrap the project i have to like adjust to what i'm doing like quite a few times but it normally turns out like i wanted but not exactly like it and i just do whatever comes to my mind and you know just for general knowledge of, of the viewers out there um Jasmine has only been on camera with us a couple of times. The first time she was on a uh, a time lapse that we did of a, a painting she did, and 
the second time I haven't actually finished editing it yet but she took uh, my study in clouds uh, cloud tunnel tutorial that didn't quite work out so well for us and she created her own painting on top of it that turned out pretty interesting so we hope to get that up for you pretty soon but you know if she seems a little nervous on camera that's why she's only been on camera a few times kind of don't make any sense to me she's all over instagram and tiktok with the trends but i guess that's a different different feel she's not really creating the content from scratch herself like she is with our youtube channel um so moving on to the the projects we have i have in mind i know i've got the uh cloud study i want to revisit cause as i just said that didn't work out too well for us uh, i'm thinking i may want to uh sort of do a product review on some of the paints that we use um one particular thing I want to address for this a product view or review or not is adjusting to using a new product because uh, one of the things that went wrong with us on that cloud study was up until then I had been using the, the liquid crafters acrylics and everything was working out fine with my method and my technique and there, everything was working out the way I wanted it to work and I was getting some pretty realistic looking clouds and I, I changed brands and the paint was thicker and, cr and creamier and it stayed wet longer and so rather than getting those nice beautiful realistic clouds that I was getting with the liquid crafters acrylics I got more of a cartoony type of cloud so I want to I want to address adjusting to new products I've got a uh, a drawing that my wife her mother did and it's it's pretty rudimentary uh that's just because she's not an artist she just occasionally decides she wants to draw something that i wanted to uh try to recreate and improve upon and try to convey the image that she was trying to convey i've got uh my homemade easel that if you saw some of our earlier episodes uh was made out of a ladder and uh, a backing board that I want to retire with style. I want to turn it into a piece of art itself. So we want to, we want to visit that subject. And I've got a, another special project painting that I started for my pastor. And so we want to we want to move on and finish that. That'll probably be at least a two parts uh, project there. Um, let's see. And uh, of course we got the the art history spots with uh rob the heckling cat so i need i'm gonna be working on some of those and uh we want to get bring in some special guests um and the special guests we want to bring in excuse me may not be what you're expecting uh i want to bring in some youngsters that are just learning the craft the hobby the 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 industry however you want to word it and um basically show you that we're not trying to address the moderately or advanced experienced painter and just give you a few tips and tricks here along the way that we've picked up um, i mean that is what we're doing but uh, by bringing in these youngsters i want to show that you know the methods that we use anybody can learn if we can teach a youngster then anybody can learn it uh, one thing that has been brought up several times in my Facebook group and some uh, other people's Facebook groups that I'm in is the issue of color blindness. So I want to work on a few monotones. Uh, I know there's another painter out there that he just he just did a couple that were black and white. And while while that's all well and fine and beautiful and he does great work. Uh, maybe someone's colorblind they want somebody to give them a color and create a painting from that color so we don't want to address just black and white besides that not everybody that's colorblind sees in black and white i mean some of those some of those people may not be able to see darks and gray tones and stuff like that so it may their colorblindness may be a certain color they don't see 
So I, I want to address that issue by doing a few monotones. I've got a, like for example, I've got a green waterfall that I did. And the entire thing's in, in green and shades of green and different color gradients of green. So that's kind of what I want to do. I mean, we'll probably do a few black and whites, but just do some monotones to address the color blindness issue. Um, I had a few people mention uh, mobility issues. Uh, like one one uh, group member in particular is having mobility issues with his hands. And so even though I addressed it once, I think the footage with it was too corrupt and I wound up privating the video but uh, I want to address I want to address that issue um, I'm a left hand dominant painter so to address that issue I want to try to I want to do some right hand dominant paintings because uh, for me even though even though I use both hands you know I'm left hand dominant I do a few little things like blending and that kind of thing with my right hand <coughs> nine times out of ten my left hand is doing the painting my right hand's holding the brush and I just switch brushes and because it, it, when it comes to blending, it is a two two brush process. There's really no way around it. Most acrylic paints dry too fast to use just one brush when you're blending. So I want to switch that up to where I'm doing most of the work with my right hand and just doing the blending work with my left hand. That that will kind of address the mobility issue because my right hand is not trained as well as my left. Uh, there's there was something else, and maybe I'll think of it in a few minutes, but. Uh, why don't you uh, talk to us a little bit about any prog projects you may have in mind? I don't really know. I'm kind of focused on studying for the testing, but I may do some, like, kid arts for Lily. Well, let me interrupt here for just a minute. The, the comment she just made about uh, studying for testing, at the time of this recording, it's nearing the end of the school year so that's the testing she's she's talking about in the school year uh testing at school but um so the, the, i mean i really don't know how to get a little more detailed with you on it how to, how to word it in a way that you would understand um but you know, like I've got the certain things I want to address, the certain things I want to redo, that kind of stuff. I mean, do you have any specific projects in mind? You have to use words. People can't hear a head nod. No. <laughs> well, I mean, so that's that. Uh, so that, that's a little bit about myself and Jasmine individually. Now, as G and J artworks, excuse me, as G and J Chapel artworks is concerned, we're father and daughter. Um, I'm 48. She's 13. As the way I already addressed, I paint landscapes. She just paints whatever she wants. She usually has a plan. I usually don't. Um, for me, planning only goes as far as an idea. Uh, for her, she's got got the idea. She's got a general picture in her mind of what she wants her painting to turn out like so that's my my version of planning over her version of planning she's she's more deliberate about what she wants to do and i'm more deliberate about what i want to do with my style um but i don't really usually know what i want to do a lot of times you'll catch that uh i sit down in front of the canvas in front of the camera and we start talking about our color palette and the size canvas we're going to use and how we prep the canvas and a lot of times you'll hear me use this exact phrase. We really don't have a plan. We're just going to see what comes out of our brush today. Because that's the way I paint. I don't, I don't plan my paintings. I just plan the idea of my painting. Um, but our goal is to teach. That anybody can learn this. I mean, on my side of it, like I said before, I do the wet on wet technique that Bob Ross made famous. Um, but I've had to adjust the methods for acrylic painting. And so my goal is to teach that my method will work for anybody, even a complete novice, um, which I was. I mean, before I started this channel, I'd only done maybe 10 or so paintings. So, I mean, 
we're not professional artists. We're not great artists. Not everything we do is going to turn out beautiful. So we don't want to give you that impression right off the bat. We're we're learning, and you're following. If you're following along, you're learning along with us. As we learn new things that might help you out, we'll 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 bring it up and put it in a video. And if you learn something new, by all means, feel free to comment, and maybe we'll we'll contact you. Say hey. Uh, why don't we get together and you do you do a short video of what what this method you're describing is or whatever it is that you're talking about and maybe we can address it on the channel for everybody so i want it to be a cooperative thing you know you guys have an idea of something that maybe i need to address uh like for instance right now the big popular thing is the aurora borealis why that has become so popular all of a sudden I don't know. I mean, it's it is, it is a beautiful sight. It does make for beautiful paintings, um, but that's something we'll probably learn together. I haven't attempted it yet, so that's something we'll probably learn together. Uh, I'm not real big into the seascapes, so we'll probably develop our skills together on that. Uh, waterfalls and and you know just various aspects of, of of the landscapes and waterscapes. You know, we'll, we'll learn those things along the way. But, you know, if there's a particular method or a particular issue, like I said, with the color blindness or a mobility issue or something like that, that maybe I can figure out a way to address on the channel and apply it to to our paintings so that you can understand how you can work with that, then, you know, by all means, let me know. And if I can work something out, you'll see it on the channel. Um, <coughs> that's the kind of the way it's going to work uh, even even with Jasmine's side of things you know maybe there's something that you just like to see her paint suggest it um, and he, he, you know same goes for mine you know there may be a certain rut we get into maybe you just need to say hey look uh, look Greg we're kind of getting into a rut here we seem to be painting the same mountain over and over and over and over which, by the way, the lake and I consider great Bob Ross was notorious for. He'd get locked into a rut on a certain mountain, and you'd see that same mountain in a hundred different paintings, it seemed like. But, you know, if I get into a rut like that, and I seem to be painting the same thing over and over, and just basically the same picture, different colors, different, you know. But in general, it's, it, I get into a rut of painting the same picture. By all means, let me know maybe suggest something maybe i maybe like i said i'm in in a rut of painting the same mountain over and over and over again and maybe you say hey uh, greg i noticed we seem to be painting the same mountain over and over again why don't we try doing a lake or why don't we try doing a a, a beach sunset or something just kind of break the monotony a little bit and that'll, that'll trigger me to say yeah you know what we are we are painting the same thing over and over we need to do something different but you know even with Jasmine, you know, the suggestion, you know, maybe she gets into, I try to keep her from doing it on camera because of copyright issues, but she, she gets into the, the stranger things mode because she's a fan of stranger things. She gets into the stranger things mode. And like I said, because of copyright, it's not likely I'm going to let her do that on camera, but it's an example. Say she's on camera and she's doing stranger things and, Maybe she's doing a whole lot of Demogorgons. And you don't necessarily want her to get out of Stranger Things, but you want her to do something different. Suggest it. Or maybe you do want her to get her out of Stranger Things. Suggest something. And maybe she can try to figure it out. Um, matter of fact, she got into one of those ruts, and I threw up the idea. And I haven't tried it myself yet, because I want to be creative about how I do it. You know, I don't want to do a straight square or... Or line or, or, or tower but I, I, I suggest that you know why don't you do a multi-panel and she wound up doing a bugs in a flower garden mural out of four panels for her sister so you know things like that can be suggested too um, so you know we're, we're a tutorial channel we want to teach you what we know and we don't know everything we're not great at everything but that's part of the fun and joy of this journey. And even, you know, even if you are great, yes, some of the other painters out there and 
you know, I hate to do a call out without without talking to him, but I actually heard him say something along these lines in a recent live. Um, paint with Josh. He's a wonderful painter. Does beautiful work. And he experiments and he he gets into the seascapes and that kind of thing. And he does a lot of auroras. I mean, he, he, does, he does beautiful work. But in a recent live, I heard him allude to the fact that even he doesn't always get it the way he wants it. So don't expect yourself to always accomplish what you're trying to accomplish. It may not turn out the way you want to. Just remember, as long as in the end, whether you're happy with it or not, as long as in the end you're satisfied with the attempt and you realize that something went wrong and you can figure out what went wrong, then that, that failure is your view in it is a learning experience but at the same time what you see as a failure may be a success in the eyes of an art collector or an art lover or maybe even another artist uh, like I do I don't want to say realism I don't want to say photo photorealistic but I my landscapes look like they could be real and you know, so if I have a landscape that to me looks childish, another another artist or a collector or an art lover may look at it and go, no, that's not childish. That's you accidentally doing this style instead of your normal style. So don't don't look at every thing that you see as a failure as a failure. It may not be. It may be you accomplished what you wanted, just not in this style you wanna wanted to accomplish it. Um, and I try to, I try to, I try to instill that in Jasmine too, that not everything's going to turn out the way you want it to. Um, not everything's going to be your normal style. I mean, she's done, she's done some of the landscapes I do and they're, they're pretty close. They're not as realistic as mine. So she's got kind of a cross of styles there between, I would say realism and character, but she's also done some childlike cartoon paintings that turned out really well and she's done some really good paintings of just something she wanted to paint so you know just because something didn't turn out the way you expected doesn't make it a failure um, I, know, I know you've got some things you you've picked up on through your journey in art that maybe you might want to tell our viewers especially our younger viewers um, because it's hard for a younger viewer to look at someone my age and look at the the work that I'm creating, even though it's not always great. It's hard for someone someone your age or younger to look at someone my age and my artwork and and see that they can pull it off too with some practice. And that that's kind of uh, Josh has got his three P's. Well, I've got my three D's with with acrylic painting dampness. Dampness is important. You got to have a wet brush. You got to keep your, your acrylics at, at the right consistency for what you're trying to get them to do. Uh, so dampness is key because acrylics dry fast. So dampness is D number one. And then you got your drive. Now, drive isn't how, how you initially think. Uh, when I say drive in this instance, um, Pressure is key, which is one, one of Josh's P's. He's got his three P's. Pressure is key. It's one of those things. But more so with acrylics, more so than pressure is drive. Because um, you're not going to just do a nice, gentle, sweeping stroke and get acrylic paints to do what you want them to do every time. So a lot of times you got to drive it in. You got to put a little pressure behind that brush, that nice gentle sweeping stroke. You got to put a little pressure behind it to get that paint to move. So, um, drive. So we're, we've got dampness. We've got drive. Now our third P is determination. Now determination. Yeah, excuse me. Our third D. Thanks to the kid for the correction there. <laughs> the third D is determination and not, that is exactly what you think determination in this instance is just another word for practice so you get you know the more determined you are the more you stick with it the more you keep doing it 
the better you're going to get. So we've got our three Ds. We've got dampness, we've got drive, and we've got determination. And as long as you keep those things in mind, no matter how your painting turns out, you keep those things in mind. You keep the dampness in mind so you can get the paint to do what you want it to do. You, get, you keep the drive in mind so you can get it to move where you want it to move. And the determination to just keep doing it no matter how it turns out is what's going to bring you to the level that you want to be at. No matter what age you are, you can be my age, you can be Jasmine's age, you can be younger, you can be older. It doesn't matter. Whenever you, whenever in life you start, those three D's, when it comes to acrylic painting, those three D's are going to be the keys to getting you to where you want to be in your art journey. But I got off track again. So, Jasmine, what, what are some things that you may, might tell someone your age or younger about getting into acrylic painting? practice and just have fun with it and, and you know that, that's actually great advice for anybody i mean if you're not having fun with your painting journey then you're not gonna you're not gonna continue to practice the determination is gonna fade away and eventually you're gonna you're gonna get away from the the, the idea of painting uh, this happened to me several times with uh, model cars I, I i love building model cars um, I love building custom model cars. As a matter of fact, most of the model cars I've built, you can't find a kit for. And the reason you can't find a kit for them is because it takes two, three, sometimes four or five kits to build one model car. Um, because of the way I do things, I do a lot of modifications and customization. And so, so you know, you can't find a single kit for a lot of mine. But, uh, and the same thing goes for art, you know. You're going to do what you want to do no matter what it takes to do it if you're determined enough but you know i i eventually i, I run into burnout or i just get tired of doing it um i got tired of doing model cars and just didn't do it for almost 20 years and then i got into doing 164 which, if you guys don't understand the scale of con the concept of scale in, in model cars, 164 is your your typical Matchbox or Hot Wheels. I got into customizing those, and then I got back into the <coughs> the 124 and 125 Styrene models, and and I, I developed those skills all over again. And then I got burnout. So it happens. Burnout happens, and. You know, you'll you may not lose the determination, but you may lose the desire for a little while. Else. And so, you know, if you if you're not having fun with it, maybe you just need to take a break. Um, and that's what's happened to me with a lot of my other hobbies. Um, I've got so many hobbies; it's ridiculous. So, burnout happens, and you run into burnout in in your art style. A lot of times, it's a little easier than just taking a break. You may run out, you may get into a period of time where you're burnt out with art in general and you just need to take a break. And that's fine. Take a break if you need to take a break. Don't let it override your mind and overstress you to continue creating art. If it's not fun and you're not, and it's not coming naturally to you, take a break if you feel like you need to. But if you still want to do the arts and you still enjoy doing the art, but you're looking at your art, and like we mentioned before, you've gotten into a rut of painting the same mountain over and over and over and over and over. Then step out of that comfort zone. Go online, find something you think you can paint, download that picture. Download that picture that's something you think you can paint, and study it for a while. And then what I want you to do is instead of trying to paint that picture in your style, Try to do it in another style. So, and, and what that's going to do is that's going to break your monotony of painting the same thing over and over again. It's going to make the paint, break the monotony of sticking with the same style all the time, and that's going to spawn your your mind to go, oh wait, well I just did this in this style. So now if I go back to my style, I know I can do this in this style. Maybe I can try to do that same thing in my style, and that gets gets the creativity flowing again. Um, I actually did that with a, a challenge in one of the groups I'm in. They posted a picture of a dandelion in the grass. And the only thing that was in focus was the dandelion, a few blades of grass, and a few blades of grass. And you had the uh, out-of-focus 
buildings in the background and the challenge was to do it abstract well like i said i'm kind of a, a realistic uh i go for realism not photorealism but i go for realism so when the and i do like i do landscape so when the challenge come up to do this one single subject in a different style i jumped on it and it turned out pretty decent it didn't turn out great i wasn't exactly proud of it but it broke that monotony it got me back in the creative thinking and, and that's something you need to, to think of so if it gets to where it's still fun but you're you're getting into a rut and it's getting monotonous for you change it up a little bit but if you're if you're getting stressed out trying to create something trying to make it work for you you're overworking it or something like that just take a break take a break sit back enjoy what you've done so far and let, let your mind reset so to speak give it a little bit of time and then when you feel comfortable with it that first idea pops in your head that's when you know it's time that's when you know your breaks over when that first idea and that first desire to put that idea on the canvas strikes you then you'll know your breaks over with but take a break for as long as you need um, sometimes I do things like this where I want to paint something but I don't know what I, what I want to paint so hey why don't we just go on and we'll do a video and we'll, we'll, we'll talk about our general and we'll talk about our channel and who we are and so that's what we're kind of doing uh, other times I'll get into one of those ruts and I'll do an art history spot and do the animation for Rob the Heckling Cat. Just various things you can do related to what to your your particular art and particular art style will sometimes prevent you from needing to take a break where you just say, you know what, maybe this week we'll, we'll, we'll put you in in the in, in our seat as YouTube creators. Maybe this week I don't want to paint a painting because I just don't know what I want to do. I don't feel inspired. But maybe I can go on. Maybe I can go on, and I, I can do what G and J Chapel Artworks did, and just kind of talk about myself, my general art process, and art in general. And, and you you still have done something art related. You still you still satisfied that need to do art because you're talking about art. But you didn't have to do a painting because you didn't feel the inspiration for a painting. So I mean, there's all kinds of things you can do to break the monotony and. Uh, get your, your your get out of that block. A lot of people call it block. You can get out of that rut. You can get out of that block. Um, really, I, if you got anything you can add to that, because I'm running out of, of thoughts and I haven't thought of the next subject yet. Nope. She's not much help sometimes. I swear. Sometimes she's almost as useful as a hammer in a pillow factory. <laughs> you can laugh at that. So, anyway, that's, that's a little bit about who we are, a few little, a little bit about who, what our channel is all about, just a few little tips. Don't let it stress you. If you're not enjoying it, take a break. If you are enjoying it, just remember, the more you do it, the better you're going to get.